so I'm down here in Titusville again on the Amax Brewer Bridge. This is day five. Day five of coming down here to Titusville. Well, I, I've made it all the way down. This is my fourth time making the full trip down. Fifth time partial. Uh, I left on Saturday, started to head down this way and got news, luckily early enough, that they were scrubbing the launch that day. So I was able to turn around, head back home. But we came down Thursday. Flash back. All right, so we are in St. Augustine right now, hoping this weather's gonna clear up a little bit. We're on our way down to Cape Canaveral to shoot the next shuttle launch, and uh, the weather is just not looking good at all. All right, so we're in Titusville now. This weather is not looking good for a launch tonight. Day two. All right, so it is 12 o'clock right now. I am in Putnam County, Florida. Clouds are starting to break up. It's looking like we might have a launch this evening. Well, later that same evening. All right, so we're all gassed up and we are on the road, get ready to head down to Titusville, try and catch the shuttle launch tonight. Um, checked a lot of webcams and looked at some weather reports and it's not gonna be clear and we may not have the best sunset, but from what I could tell, there were some breaks in the clouds and we might get lucky and get some breaks in the clouds out west. So when the sun does set, uh, we end up with a good looking sunset there. So that's what we're hoping for. Uh, hoping to get a good sunset. I think I'm gonna try and shoot it from the top of the bridge down there and uh, see you guys down there. Oh, come on! Day three. A four. Hold, hold, hold. Not so fast. SpaceX's fourth launch scrub happening on Sunday, but this time the weather isn't to blame. A cruise liner making its way towards the no-go zone. The Coast Guard not able to clear out in time, forcing SpaceX to scrub their mission again. And a flashback. I decided the bridge was going to be a good spot. I haven't shot from here before. I've got a couple from the ground. I wanted to get a little bit of an elevated uh, perspective, so we'll see how that goes. Right now it's 5.17, so we're a little under an hour away from launch times. The launch time is scheduled at 6.11. This is a sun-synchronous launch, so there's no speeding it up or slowing it down. It has to go at 6.11 or it doesn't go at all. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed today that hopefully the Coast Guard has their stuff in order today and has gotten all the cruise ships and any pontoon boats or uh, swimming children out of the way so I can get this launch. Uh, I've got a lot of money and time invested in this thing now and I just couldn't see myself pulling the plug uh, when the spot opened up this afternoon for me to be able to come down. The good thing about coming down yesterday was I got kind of a dress rehearsal on exactly what my uh, exposure needed to be. I'm trying to catch this whole thing in one exposure. So doing a long exposure during the daytime is very difficult if you don't have the right gear to do it in. Uh, I have a six stop neutral density filter and a 15 stop neutral density filter. And I think I've come to the conclusion that the six stop is just not quite gonna give me what I need. Uh, and the 15 stop seems to be a little bit too much. So I think in the future, what I'm gonna do is get a four stop to go along with my six stop so I can get the, so I can cover the entire dynamic range there. I can have a four, a six, combine those together for a 10 and then have a 15 as well. I think 10 stop would really put me in the sweet spot. I really wanna keep the lens set at F5 because I know for a fact using computer software Software, that this lens is at its absolute sharpest at f5 so I know I want to keep that at f5 and my variable so variable uh, is going to be ISO because my exposure time needs to be around three to four maybe even five minutes so that's what I'm shooting for so the good thing about last night was I kind of got an idea of where I stand with that I'm gonna have the camera rolling for this I don't know where I'll be able to position it it might get a little tight up here it might get a little busy up here there were several people up last night to watch the launch but hopefully I'll have enough space to be able to record everything that happens so you guys can see it in real time. Following along you are likely familiar with today's payload. 
payload, but for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, Cosmos SkyMed is an Italian Earth observation satellite designed to help monitor the environment, including the pre prevention and management of natural disasters. Owned by the Italian Space Agency and the Ministry of Defense, it is the first in a constellation of satellites to be operated for both civilian and military purposes. All right, so all indications are that it's going to be a go tonight, so hopefully we're able to get this, and uh, hopefully you can hear me over all this wind. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and liftoff. In Bosca, as Go Falcon, go Cosmo. vehicle is pitching down range. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the Cosmos SkyMed satellite to a polar sun synchronous orbit. Power and telemetry nominal. Now during ascent, we tilt the engines, and that's what we call gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally, that's what we call a gravity turn. We're still going up, but we're now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. The rocket typically needs to go Falcon about... Falcon 9 is supersonic. We need to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth. Max Q. And there we heard the call out for Max Q. We have now passed through the maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load on the vehicle. And with that, we do have five events coming up back to back. They'll happen within seconds of each other. And these events include the first stage uh, making its way back to landing zone one today. So we'll have Miko, main engine cutoff, stage separation, a flip of the first stage, SES one or second stage engine Impact start one, burn. and then followed immediately by the boost back burn on the first stage. Again, that's five events happening within seconds of each other. We should get some good views of these happening. Again, that is Miko, stage separation, S1 flip. on a nominal trajectory. Good call outs there. So stage one flip, SES one, and the boost back burn coming up here in a few seconds. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back to mission. Stage one, boost back startup. and some incredible views from the ground cameras. We actually got to visually see Miko stage separation and see the first stage flip on your screen. That was incredible to see. Now what you're seeing on your screen on the left-hand side is the first stage uh, currently in its boost back burn. That is the first of three burns to make its way back to land. And on your right-hand screen, we do have the second stage engine lit up and so far looking really good on nominal trajectory. Stage one, boost back, shut down. And we are that call out that the boost back burn has ended. Now in a few seconds here, we should see the fairing halves on the second stage being deployed. Got some awesome views here. The left-hand screen is showing the first stage with the grid fins deploying on your screen. Bearing separation confirmed. And we heard that call out and visual confirmation on your right hand screen that the fairing halves have deployed. They're now making their way back to Earth and we will attempt to recover them with our recovery vessel named Bob today. Incredible views today. Got some great ground views of the vehicle as it is making its ascent.
right, so hopefully you guys can see me well enough. I got a little bit of light left here. I wanted to get some video before I left. I got I, what I think is an amazing shot. I really hope once I get it home and get it on the camera or get it on the computer uh, at full screen and see what it looks like. I think I got a really killer shot. Last second, I decided I was gonna not do just a four minute exposure and get the launch. I did an eight minute exposure and got the launch and the recovery. So really keeping my fingers crossed that all of that turns out. On the back of the camera, I can see it. The recovery is a little bit more faint than the launch, but keeping our fingers crossed that everything turned out well. So I just wanted to get a little bit of video here on the bridge before I left. We're up here on the A Max Brewer Bridge. You know that because I told you that in the earlier video. I don't know why I'm saying it again. I'm just super stoked. Oh my God, I gotta stop cussing. <laughs> I'm so freaking stoked that I just got the launch and the recovery all in one shot using a 15 stop ND. And uh, from what I can tell, looking at the back of the camera, it looks like it came out spectacular. So keeping my fingers crossed, I'm gonna go ahead and pack all this gear up now, start heading my way back up to Jacksonville.